Hi, I'm Chris. I like to paint things, and you gotta bear with me because I'm just getting over a cold. Today, I'm gonna paint a tank for Snarl from Snarling Badger Studios, uh, the little game they made called Tanks for the Apocalypse. In Tanks for the Apocalypse, you build a little Sherman tank, or a big Sherman tank. I don't remember what scale it's supposed to be. This is 172 scale from Airfix. I think it's a little bit small. And you're supposed to kit bash it up, turn it into a little punk rock tank of death. So, what are we gonna build? That's right, we're gonna build the Taking Care of Business tank, the TCB from Shotzi Blackheart of the WWE, the most punk rock person I know. I found this amazing miniature at my local store, uh, Bomber Sophie from Reaper. It's a bit of a pinup, I don't normally paint pinups, but we're gonna make it look a little less, uh, you know, creepy, and we're gonna slap this girl onto a tank and make the TCB, I'm very excited. I had this idea literally walking around the hobby store looking for miniatures to buy, and it all just kind of clicked. Sophie here is a, a single piece metal model, which I really like painting single piece metal models. She's supposed to sit on this uh, nuke this bomb. She's also supposed to have bat wings. Um, I don't think I'm going to use them, but they're pretty dang cool. I think I'm going to have her riding on top of this tank. We're going to kit bash it up. We're going to do some scratch building, some weathering. We're going we're gonna to have a good time with this tank. I'm going to turn a really basic Sherman Firefly into the ballsy badass TCB tank. Check it out. I woke up at about 4 in the morning on Thanksgiving and decided to get building on this tank. Uh, don't ask me why. I don't know. This is a really nice little kit that comes on sprue and it's got really easy or really hard options. So we're going to go with the really hard option and I'm going to save those spare pre-made treads if I want to make a second tank. Any plastic kit like this always use the Tamiya Extra Thin Cement. Now I'm a person who buys a lot of like used models on eBay and a lot of like cheap Reaper stuff. I'm a very um, frugal miniature painter and builder. So it was kind of nice to build like a plastic kit on a sprue because often I buy like pre-assembled models, you know, on the cheap. Um, so this was fun. It was fun to figure it out, follow some instructions, just glue bits together. The only thing Tammy you can't fix is warped pieces, so we're just gonna chuck those away. I don't know if I'm doing this right. Uh, it's kind of a weird kit, and I haven't spent enough time studying like the anatomy of a tank. Putting these treads on was a bit of a nightmare, but it was kind of satisfying because it has a little more depth than the like the preset, pre-built track it gives you for easy mode. Then I slapped the chassis on there and uh, got to work finishing the rest. What a fun little project. I could build tanks all day. Now, we gotta source a skull for our TCB tank that's going to really sell it. So I tried out a few options for my bits box. And nothing was right. So we're gonna figure the skull situation out later. For now, we're gonna do a little bit of kit bashing. So I slapped the old uh, B-52 on the back and held it down with some chains so it looked like it was strapped to the back. In Tanks for the Apocalypse, these tanks are like your lifeblood, they're your base of operations, they've got all your survival gear on them. You don't go anywhere unless you're in a tank. You don't even have a house. I'm pretty sure everyone here lives in the tank. So I had to get Shotzi tooled up for the Apocalypse. So I put like a gun on the side and kind of tried to look like it was mounted. I don't know, I was just playing around. It's kind of fun to just like kit bash a, a pre-existing kit and just slap stuff on top of it. 
For the time being, I'm just using the front of a some sort of Warhammer Titan Knight skull thing. I don't know. It's definitely not what we're going to settle on. I tried to sculpt one. Um, <laughs> so I don't think sculpting is in my wheelhouse. But that's okay. I bought these guys on the internet. I bought like a 10 pack of giant skulls. And they're a little big, but they literally slot perfectly inside. I mean, how do you not use that going forward? So I just slapped some EVA foam on the back and... I apparently directly glued that to the metal, hoping it would stick. EVA foam is like the king of getting two weird pieces of material to stick together, because it'll always stick to everything. Don't ask why. It's just like some secret sauce I learned from Bill making stuff. I think that looks pretty cool. Uh, I slapped a bunch of foam on there, tried to kind of tie all the bits together so it didn't look like it was just glued on. I think it looks really good and really scrappy. It looks like Shotzi had to source all the parts from the wasteland. So I primed our tank in black and then did a really, really heavy zenithal of Rust-Oleum 2X flat gray. Uh, I don't have any green primer and honestly, I don't really care enough to buy any green primer. We're just gonna do base coats. I'm going to start with a base coat of Castellan Green, followed by uh, Elysian? Elysian Green? Yeah, Elysian Green from Citadel. These are like my two of my favorite greens ever. Green is a great color to paint, um, and these two just take the cake. So we do a really, really thin two coats of that Castellan Green over literally everything, because I have no idea what's going to be green. It's a tank, like 90% of it is going to end up being green. So I didn't want to have to like go back and figure any shit out later. We're just gonna go green top to bottom. And this is a really nice military green too. Then we do a dry brush of that really light Elysian green. Pretty heavy dry brush, trying to catch all of the edges. Maybe not as heavy as I'm doing right now. Um, yeah, definitely not. But we do need it to look a little worn, a little blasted, a little beat up. I'm gonna do some weather effects later in this video, which is a really fun uh, experiment. I've never really tried weathering before, um, but we'll get to that. Right now, we're just, like, like I said, doing heavy dry brushes, catching everything with the Legion Green. Uh, I think I do two light passes over pretty much the entire model, not really worrying about catching the gray stuff, because obviously we're going to paint that all later. Next, our second base coat is a military dark blue gray from Vallejo, a very, very specifically named color that serves a very specific purpose. It's like just a hair darker than Rust-Oleum 2X, and I've I've fallen in love with this color. It's my go-to if you wanted something to be black, because once you wash it, it kind of looks black, uh, you know, from five feet away on the tabletop. And this I did to base coat, like, all of the accessories and the items and the kit bash pieces. Most of these won't stay gray, but I want to see how evenly spread all of my colors would be over the model. Next, metallics. Now, I think real military stuff shouldn't have a lot of metal showing, but... I don't know, that skull's gotta be metal, right? I mean, we're gonna do lots of, lots of metal. So the skull gets a whole base coat of a really dark gun metal, so it's no longer gray. If you look at the source image of our skull, that thing is shining like pearlescent metal. I also did it over the little exhaust pipes on the back that I never mentioned that I added, but they're like the only thing the real TCB tank has that I forgot when I first did the little build video. Uh, and we pick out some other metallic places being really rough because we're gonna dirty this sucker up later We just need like the hint of metal. I don't want to like paint and glitter up the entire model Next we take a super super white metallic from green stuff world that is a color I like finding uses for as long as you remember to shake it up a lot and Then we do like an overbrush over that skull because again, we're gonna go almost pearlescent with this skull It's got to be like like a disco ball basically so we do a super heavy dry brush of that, and then follow it up with a bunch more base coats.
Now before we get to weathering, we gotta do some details. So if you saw before, I did some hazard stripes. They came out surprisingly well. This detail will be covered later, I promise. I I don't know how to freehand. I think I need to try freehanding not on a, a project I care about. I wanted to just do the TCB because I didn't really have like a a good um stencil for it. So I figured I'd just try and do the graffiti method and just do big box colors and then do like a hard highlight. And then I could probably fix it later, but Man, my handwriting with like a pen is really bad, so like, using a brush, jeez, there's no shot. I've done a couple good free hands in my days, but this was not one of them. It just, the rest of the tank I think looks so good so far, this was like the weakest link. So, so, I do, I do cover it up later, don't worry. But, always try, try new things, right? Instead, we're gonna do some little decals to add the last bit of uh, detail, as it were. I really like that giant star, and I think it was very fitting to chuck that guy on here. Um, I've done, you know, transfers a million times, but if you need to know how to do them, look up tutorials, because I'm probably not doing things correctly. And to protect our transfers and the rest of the tank from the next few steps, I use a varnish. I also primed our little miniature that we're gonna paint in a second in Rust-Oleum flat gray, just like the rest of the model. So I, I didn't want to like muddy this too much, so I did, I believe it's two washes of Army Painter Soft Tone, but the Soft Tone I even softened up with the Quick Shade Medium. Now, I don't know why this is the option I chose. I think I was worried that it would be too brown, and it looks really bad going on, but it'll look great when it's done. Now, we're gonna learn how to paint Shotzi. I'm not gonna teach you how to paint Shotzi, I'm not the greatest painter, uh, but these are kind of the colors I used. Some flesh tones, some red, some speed paints for the leather, green for the hair, a lot of layering, a lot of stuff. I don't know. I'm not feeling great. I'm not going to talk a lot. Just check it out. Have you ever tried painting makeup on a miniature? Holy crap, this is difficult. I, I tried to paint her lipstick and she just looked like a demonic Ronald McDonald, man. Faces are hard. Chemicals, man. They'll fuck you up. All right, break out your sponges, kids. We're gonna do some weathering. Now, weathering is not something I've covered on this channel a lot. It's something I'm really learning. I'm trying to sell and figure out realism. Now, realism in a game about tanks with giant skulls on them seems a little silly, but we're gonna try and sell it as a thing that exists within a real world. So you take your uh, sponge, these are like natural sponges I actually got from the craft store, and some muddy paints, and just kind of randomly dab at corners, places that Things are gonna get hit. Uh, just we're gonna create rust. If I if I didn't even make that clear, we're just gonna go over some of these nicely dry brushed corners and just add a bit of beat up, dirty, grimy weathering. And then 
go back over the edges with a silver paint just do like an edge highlight of silver so it looks like the paint has like chipped off at the corners now i probably could have went a little further and added like some real like silver chipping maybe a second or third layer of like this brown really add that depth in but we're gonna do rust in each corner this is a really interesting color from the army painter i know they're coming out with a new lines of effect paint so this is the older dried rust effect i'm not sure if it's getting replaced in the fanatics range but this is the one that exists as of like late 2023 before the fanatics line came out I'm gonna go super light on this because it is a desert, so there shouldn't be a lot of moisture accumulating, but there won't not be moisture, you know what I mean? More, things are just gonna get beat up and not taken care of. So in some of those rusty areas and a lot of corners, I do really, really thin down of this rusty paint, and this rusty paint dries very, very matte to uh, up that rust factor. Now we're gonna get real dusty. We're gonna grab Steel Legion Drab from Citadel and a really, really springy makeup brush. I don't know what kind these are, but it's got a really, really like rounded tip as opposed to the other ones that I normally use. And we're gonna do the most aggressive dry brush, like almost stippling. Imagine you, you, you dry brush and you take most of the paint off and then you just stipple along the bottom. All the bottom corners, like we're really gonna get some dust up and everything. It's a very subtle technique at the first time you hit it, and then a hundred smacks into your tank later, and then it looks really, really good. I mean, that's that's basically the last major piece I needed to do on this tank, so I decided to glue our friend Shotzi onto the top of the tank before realizing I made one fatal error. I forgot. You know how much I love edge highlighting. I, I don't even know how I forgot. It, I did punch up all those reds and yellows and do some silver like accents out along the bottom. I just forgot all the details. But I did them in the end, don't worry. Speaking of details, we gotta do the eyes. I took these really, really little like translucent red beads and we're gonna give this thing laser eyes because the TCB tank has really weird gems eyes. Now, looking back, it had one red and one green, but that's okay. We're gonna do two red eyes. One is gonna be longer than the other. I think that's the laser eye. So if I were to make rules for this tank in some universe, it has both a cannon and a laser eye. Does that matter to you? No, but I think it looks really cool. And it's the final step before we call our TCB tank done. And that was it. That was our TCB tank for Tanks for the Apocalypse. Go check out Snarl issue one. I didn't do a great job of explaining that at the start of this video. I don't think my head is working correctly. I'm just not feeling 100%, but I really wanted to get this video out because I really, really enjoyed the process. I finished this tank at the very end of 2023, and I think it's the best thing I painted that whole year. Um, I painted like just shy of 200 miniatures. I don't remember. I have it written down. I can't think straight. I printed like 200 miniatures last year, and if you count this as one, it is the best thing I think I painted. I loved painting this. Uh, I think the face came out good. I don't know. If you have any recommendations on better weathering techniques, I'm always open to them. If you have any recommendation on cold medicine, I probably need some. 
I hope uh, most of this was coherent and made sense. I'm going to go make some tea and drink a whole bottle of Robitussin. Please don't ever drink a whole bottle of Robitussin. Uh, I didn't tell you to do that. Either way, I've been Chris. I like to paint things. This is my punk rock tank. And you have a great night. Uh, let me know if you build a punk rock tank. I'd be really down to see it if you send me pictures. I might make a social media eventually. Uh, I don't know. Rant over. It's been a minute 20. I'm going to get some sleep. Have a good night.